How Emotions Are Made, The Secret Life of the Brain, by Lisa Feldman Barrett, is a groundbreaking book that challenges the classical view of emotions and presents a new theory of constructed emotion, which has significant implications for psychology, neuroscience, and our understanding of the human mind. The Classical View of Emotions Traditionally, emotions have been seen as universal, biologically hardwired responses to stimuli that are automatically triggered and express themselves in specific, recognizable ways. This classical view suggests that basic emotions such as happiness, sadness, anger, fear, surprise, and disgust are universally expressed and recognized across cultures. Moreover, this perspective posits that each emotion has a distinct corresponding set of bodily responses and facial expressions. The theory of constructed emotion. In contrast to the classical view, Barrett presents the theory of constructed emotion, which posits that emotions are not innate, but are constructed by our brains as we interpret our experiences. According to this theory, emotions are complex and highly individualized phenomena that are created on the spot based on a combination of sensory input, past experiences, context, and interoception, the perception of internal bodily states. Prediction and Simulation A cornerstone of Barrett's theory is the concept of the brain as a predictive organ. The brain constantly anticipates future needs and prepares to meet them by making predictions based on past experiences. These predictions are essentially simulations of what we expect to happen, and they influence how we perceive and react to the world around us. The brain's predictions also shape our emotions. Rather than reacting to the world in a predetermined way, our brains predict what our emotional response should be given the context and our past experience. This means that our emotions are a combination of our brain's predictions and the actual sensory inputs we receive. Concepts and Categorization Barrett emphasizes the importance of concepts in the construction of emotions. Concepts are mental representations that categorize and give meaning to the sensory inputs we receive. Our brains use these concepts to interpret sensations as emotional states. These concepts are shaped by language, culture, and individual differences, which explains why emotions can vary so widely across different people and societies. Social reality. Barrett also discusses the social dimension of emotions, showing how they are not only constructed by the individual brain, but also by social and cultural contexts. Emotions are not just personal experiences, but are also influenced by social norms, expectations, and interactions. They can be seen as tools for navigating the social world, coordinating behavior, and communicating with others. Implications for well-being The theory of constructed emotion has significant implications for our understanding of mental health and well-being. It suggests that our capacity to regulate emotions can be improved through learning and experience. By understanding how emotions are constructed, individuals can develop better strategies for managing emotional experiences. This perspective offers a more optimistic outlook on emotional development and mental health, as it implies a certain level of malleability and adaptability. Neuroanatomy of Emotions Barrett provides a detailed description of the brain structures and networks involved in constructing emotions. She describes how regions such as the interoceptive network, the default mode network, and the salience network interact to produce emotional experiences. These brain regions are responsible for processing sensory information, anticipating and predicting bodily needs, and integrating information to construct emotional experiences. Barrett also challenges the idea that there are specific emotion centers in the brain, arguing instead for a more distributed network that works in concert to produce emotions. This contrasts with the classical view, which often associates specific emotions with distinct brain regions. The role of body budgeting. Another interesting aspect of Barrett's theory is the concept of body budgeting. The brain is responsible for regulating the body's resources, allocating energy where it is needed. Emotions are a part of this body budgeting process. They signal the state of the body's resources and the body's regulatory needs. When the body's budget is out of balance, we may experience negative emotions, while a balanced budget is associated with positive emotions. Emotion and Illness Barrett also explores how the construction of emotion can impact physical health. If the brain's predictions are constantly attuned to threats and stress, this can lead to a dysregulation of the body budget, 
contributing to chronic illnesses such as heart disease, obesity, and autoimmune disorders. Cultural differences in emotion. One of the key themes in the book is how culture shapes emotion. Barrett explains that different cultures have different emotion concepts, which can lead to diverse emotional experiences and expressions. This highlights that emotions are not just biologically determined, but are also culturally constructed. The future of emotion research. Finally, Barrett calls for a re-examination of how emotion research is conducted, advocating for methods that take into account the variability and complexity of emotional experiences. She suggests new approaches to studying emotions that consider the brain's predictive nature and the role of concepts in constructing emotions. In summary, how emotions are made presents a revolutionary view of emotions as dynamic constructs shaped by the brain, body, and culture, rather than as fixed, universal reactions. Lisa Feldman Barrett's research invites a rethinking of everything from mental health treatment to legal responsibility, influencing disciplines ranging from neuroscience to economics and technology. It emphasizes the power of learning, context, and the social environment in shaping our emotional lives, highlighting both the complexity and adaptability of human experience. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.